Good evening and welcome to another episode of Sea Fishing with CJ and it's the continuing saga of how do you catch bloody mullet? Good morning CJ, uh, I'm at Denton Island, I'm not fishing today but I thought you might like and your viewers might like to see and understand the spinners that I make, how they work and how they should be rigged. So I'll do a couple of little videos for you. Okay CJ, this is a place I've fished many times unsuccessfully, basically because the mullet you see here are either golden greys or thick lip mullet. There are a few thin lips, which are the only ones that will take these spinners, uh, but they are few and far between. Um, and particularly difficult at this late time in the season. Spring, the spring uh, is best April uh, to midsummer stay. However, they're not the uncatchables, and I'm going to show you these spinners. Okay, there are three versions here. Uh, the silver one I made up particularly for bass, but they take mullet as well and flounders as will the others. I had a two and a half pound mullet the other day, first cast on the silver one, and I had a three and a half pound on, on the big gold one. Uh, the big gold one, by the way, is actually gold. It's gold plated. The beads are Baltic amber. Uh, there are two issues here. One is I don't like chucking plastic in the sea or the river in case I lose it. And two, if you're fishing with a gold-plated spinner, you're going to fish very carefully so you don't lose it. And uh, that fishing very carefully is the key to it all. Uh, so let me show you how the worm's rigged first. This is very important. You can see it there. I've got a, uh, a barbless um, eight carp hook on the bottom. Uh, barbless is good, you can use forceps to unhook your fish if you're not taking it uh, in the water and let it go without harming it. But the real big deal is that adjustable, the worm needs to be in a straight line and the adjustable sliding hook at the top, which is a size 12 with a micro barb on it, is to just nip the top of the hook and pull it straight. On the bottom, also very important, the uh, actual tip of the worm mustn't be more than a centimetre perhaps less half a centimetre maybe uh, from the hook because it won't do anything except nip the end of it um, firstly the colour I've uh, found mullet in clear water in early spring um, just like sitting ducks in front of me so I used a spinner without uh, bait to see which colours um, which size blades would be best and um, what would attract them best and yellow beads uh, are by far outfish all, all other colours so these are glass beads now either side of the um, spinning arm has got two glass beads they're silver lined they you need to have two either side as bearings so that this blade will uh, work and spin around very nicely and leave a nice vortex behind it uh, when retrieved very slowly. Uh, this one's a two gram, I use that in still water uh, because a heavier one uh, needs you to pull it too fast to make it spin. Um, and I use the heavier one, a three gram maybe in moving water but generally speaking these fish take best a dead high and dead low tide or in a pool with no current uh, and that's when you need the little two gram with it with a small small blade uh, when they're feeding they're feeding on something specific and they're not really interested in these things but they follow them out of interest and, and uh, someone suggested that the blade might look like a, a female's tail flopping around um, and laying eggs because the mullet eggs are apparently yellow but I'm not too sure about that. Now the way to fish these is subsurface by about two or three inches and that's all and it doesn't matter if it's 20 foot of water and there's a bass on the bottom it will see that thing and come and have a look at it uh, and, and take the worm. The theory is that they think it's a smaller fish 
that has got a worm and either dropped it or it's hanging out of its mouth and they think they'll steal it. And I thought initially that they might then think there's a double dinner there with a small fish um, and take both, but they never do, and nor do the mullet. They only ever nip the end of the hook. Um, and with a barbless hook, you might think you'd have trouble landing them, but you don't. As long as you keep a tight line, uh, they'll stay on right, right to the end. So when you cast out, you've got to try and cast to one or other side of the fish. If they see that blade, uh, um, maybe, you know, a reflective line going over the top of them, they spook. So you cast to one side and pass them and bring it back along the side of them, not right over the top of the mullet. Uh, that's the best way. Um, usually if I've got it right and I found them and they're in the mood, you can get one every other cast or maybe every three casts. I did once um, take a guy out from the Angling Trust and I got eight fish one cast after another so um, these are very effective if you can find the fish and if they're in the right mood and if you fish very stealthily. Oh one other thing I forgot to say uh, if you catch one uh, a thin lip mullet and release it where you caught it it will go and tell all the others or at least release fear hormones which put the others off for at least 15 minutes maybe half an hour so it's far better when you land one if you can put it in a net uh, and take it about 100 meters up or downstream and let it go there uh, and they seem to bugger off then and uh, you can just catch one fish after the other hopefully anyway next video i'm going to either be out with cj um, and watch him catch one or i'm going to catch one myself and video it <laughs> okay see you all soon do you catch those blooming mate? This is the question. <laughs> Give it a go, climbing down in. And then sneak around here. Change this lure. This is a bass lure. Mallet, Steve's magic mallet spoons, mallet spoons. And you can see them up in their channel there. Don't know what type they are, of course. Could be thin lips. Could be thick lips, could be golden greys. All the way up there. It's a nice little egret waiting to pick off the little fish. Said you needed a break and left with no heads out. I was strong for your I'm up on the, uh, the River Ooze, uh, near South East. Uh, I wish I had warmer wellies because I'm kind of up to my ankles in mud here. Um, tide is still going out, the river is running quite swiftly down to the sea. Probably got another hour or so of that. Um, and around about the time it gets dark I would guess so we'll give it a little go here I'm not holding out much hope although you know there was a few anglers down here so there's a few people fly fishing for, for mullet and whatever else they can get so they're either optimistic like me or uh, maybe they got it right and tonight is the night gonna be fishing with one of Stevens uh, Steve Homewood's famous spoons uh, probably needs a bit of a polish actually, it's looking a bit dull with a, an artificial worm on the back end of it. Uh, let's give it a go. Won't know till we go. Well, the sun is going down in a little back eddy which is created by a sluice that comes out of the, into the river here. So we've got fresh water coming into the river uh, and it's this little back eddy so the fish can get out of the strong current here and maze, but I'm not seeing any fishy activity at all. No swirls or anything on the surface. 
nothing at all. But we'll give it another few goes. Spinner spoon's working well. In the current at the moment, I can feel the resistance, so whilst it's in the current, I don't want to wind very fast. Spoon, the current's going to be making the spoon work, but when it gets into this back eddy, you need to speed it up a little bit, just so that we get the activity going on the spoon. And that spin, that vibration and that disturbance in the water. See the spoon coming up. It's just coming to sight now. I'm going to keep doing this until I catch one, and I know that the day I get one, it's going to be so exciting. We still haven't answered the question, how do you catch bloody mullet? Um, sun's going down now, a few people fly fishing along there. Um, maybe that's how you catch them, although well, I haven't noticed if they caught any yet. There's a very big fish there, you know, pretty fast. <sighs> I just had to run to catch up with it. <laughs> it's not a mullet. Not a bass either, I don't think. They don't swim like that. It's got to be a sea trout. Tide falling, it's heading back to sea. Love to see that. Underwater. Like everyone else, we have our ups and downs. It is not just one mistake that made you think about.